For the narrator of a room of one's own, money is the primary element that prevents women from having a room of their own, and thus, having money is of the utmost importance. Because women do not have power, their creativity has been systematically stifled throughout the ages. The narrator writes, intellectual freedom depends upon material things. Poetry depends upon intellectual freedom. And women have always been poor, not for 200 years merely, but from the beginning of time. She uses this quotation to explain why so few women have written successful poetry. She believes that the writing of novels lends itself more easily to frequent starts and stops, so women are more likely to write novels than poetry. Women must contend with frequent interruptions because they are so often deprived of a room of their own in which to write. Without money, the narrator implies, women will remain in second place to their creative male counterparts. The financial discrepancy between men and women at the time of Wolfe's writing perpetuated the myth that women were less successful writers. In A Room of One's Own, the narrator argues that even history is subjective. What she seeks is nothing less than the essential oil of truth, but this eludes her, and she eventually concludes that no such thing exists. The narrator later writes, when a subject is highly controversial, one cannot hope to tell the truth. One can only show how one came to hold whatever opinion one does hold. To demonstrate the idea that opinion is the only thing that a person can actually prove, she fictionalizes her lecture, claiming, fiction is likely to contain more truth than fact. Reality is not objective, rather, it is contingent upon the circumstances of one's world. This argument complicates her narrative. Wolf forces her reader to question the veracity of everything she has presented as truth so far, and yet she also tells them that the fictional parts of any story contain more essential truth than the factual parts. With this observation she recasts the accepted truths and opinions of countless literary works. When the narrator is interrupted in a room of one's own, she generally fails to regain her original concentration, suggesting that women without private spaces of their own, free of interruptions, are doomed to difficulty and even failure in their work. While the narrator is describing Oxbridge University in Chapter 1, her attention is drawn to a cat without a tail. The narrator finds this cat to be out of place, and she uses the sight of this cat to take her text in a different direction. The oddly jarring and incongruous sight of a cat without a tail which causes the narrator to completely lose her train of thought is an exercise in allowing the reader to experience what it might feel like to be a woman writer. Although the narrator goes on to make an interesting and valuable point about the atmosphere at her luncheon, she has lost her original point. This shift underscores her claim that women, who so often lack a room of their own and the time to write, cannot compete against the men who are not forced to struggle for such basic necessities. Throughout A Room of One's Own, the narrator emphasizes the fact that women are treated unequally in her society and that this is why they have produced less impressive works of writing than men. To illustrate her point, the narrator creates a woman named Judith Shakespeare, the imaginary twin sister of William Shakespeare. The narrator uses Judith to show how society systematically discriminates against women. Judith is just as talented as her brother William, but while his talents are recognized and encouraged by their family and the rest of their society, Judith's are underestimated and explicitly de-emphasized. Judith writes, but she is secretive and ashamed of it. She is engaged at a fairly young age. When she begs not to have to marry, her beloved father beats her. She eventually commits suicide. The narrator invents the tragic figure of Judith to prove that a woman as talented as Shakespeare could never have achieved such success. Talent is an essential component of Shakespeare's success, but because women are treated so differently, a female Shakespeare would have fared quite differently even if she'd had as much talent as Shakespeare did. The central point of a room of one's own is that every woman needs a room of her own something men are able to enjoy without question. A room of her own would provide a woman with the time and the space to engage in an interrupted writing time. During Walt's time, women rarely enjoyed these luxuries. They remained elusive to women, and, as a result, their art suffered. But Wolf is concerned with more than just the room itself. She uses the room as a symbol for many larger issues, such as privacy, leisure time, and financial independence. 
each of which is an essential component of the countless inequalities between men and women. Wolf predicts that until these inequalities are rectified, women will remain second-class citizens and their literary achievements will also be branded as such.